So the HVAC guy was just here hooking everything up and was looking at the uh, plenums and stuff I built for the mini splits. And he ran some quick calculations and um, looking back at the manual and everything determined that I need to add more ducts. So I have four on each mini split right now and they're four inch ducts and a four inch duct carries about 40 CFM. I get a long run at chop time to 30 CFM. So I've got 40 CFM per duct. I've got four ducts. So that's 160 CFM, and for a one ton unit is about 400 CFM. Three quarter ton is 300 CFM. So I'm about half the amount that I need to be. So what I'm gonna do is add some extra ducts cut. I'm basically gonna build a box that's going to stick out the front of the mini split. So right where I've got those at, I'm gonna cut this out and it will slide out six inches and there'll be a box there. So the reason why we do this is the liquid that comes up to the coil inside the mini split as the air flows through it that's going to turn into a gas and if you don't have enough air flow going across it then it won't turn into a gas it will stay a liquid the liquid will go down your gas line and it will go into your system and can lower the life of your system he did say that there is when it goes into the outside unit that there is a chamber that would collect any liquid so that's why he's saying it may not be a big deal because the way it's built outside looks like um, the outside unit is already made to collect any liquid that may come through that didn't get fully evaporated. Um, but it'll be safe to just add a few more ducks anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hooking the new plenum is up. This is the one that ran next to the stove pipe. If you remember, the uh, uh, vents used to come directly out and they came out about as far as this was. This is out six inches now. So, I built a six inch uh, plenum here. So, I went ahead and directed these down so I no longer have to worry about putting a heat shield or anything. Um, these will come down and then off to where they need to go. And then I'm going to eventually drill a hole on this side and probably one here to add those uh, extra vents that we talked about. I've also got the plenums hooked up on all the other ones, all the plenum extensions. You can see it there. So they're all hooked up and ready to go. I just need to add some uh, additional vents now and we'll be done. I did the one that goes over the living room. I uh, wasn't working out very well, so I took it down. I had this up there and it was like this, and then I added the two onto the sides. And um, with these pointed down, it was going to make it difficult to ever had to get up in there and do any work. The other ones, the other two up there, come out the front, and that worked out just fine. Um, so, brainstorming, I figured if I just flip this upside down, it'd work uh, pretty darn good. Plus, I got that chimney pipe that runs right here, too. That's why I had those facing down before. But facing them up and shooting them out the sides like this is going to work out um, pretty good because I'll have one like that and then this one will go on top so they can space over each other. So I have three going out each side and then I can actually add two more here if I need to down the road. So all I'm doing now is just popping this part of that um, uh, start collar off. And it's just, basically all they do is they just press it together. You can see those dots in there. Those are just a, a press. It just pinches the metal together there and it holds it in place. OK, 
Okay, it's got the one popped off. And then I can use this as a collar to join uh, two pieces of flex duct together. So that'll save me a couple bucks right there. So you can see this is pretty mangled up when you get done, but it's just sheet metal. So just grab a pair of pliers and pinch it back straight again. It's not that big of a deal. Um, the, the biggest thing is that you don't cut yourself open like crazy because dealing with uh, sheet metal is basically like dealing with a bunch of razors. And it is very easy to cut yourself clean open. Okay, it's got the plenum put back on. You can kind of see what I was talking about here. Back up a little bit. So this is the uh, chimney pipe. This has been on for quite a while. You can see it's not overly hot. I can put my hand on it and it's fine. Um, it's on level two right now. It's been running all day long because it's freezing outside. But so before I had this plenum set up and I had these facing down, and when I put the plenums on, um, I realized I had to add more uh, ducting. I didn't want to be hitting this pipe, so I shot them down. Well, if I shot them down, all the pipes would come down and out like this, and that would pretty much block either of my paths on either side, so I wouldn't be able to get above the uh, living room very easily. So I took the plenum off, turned it upside down, put those 90s on there like that, and now all the pipes uh, flex duct will go up and then out, and that saves me all those uh, uh, issues of having the pipes come down and over. And then if need be, I can still add one here and maybe another one there, and I can still do on the bottom if I need to. So I looked up the uh, CFM on a mini split, and typically on a one ton unit, uh, that's a traditional, one ton equals about 400 CFM. And I have four uh, inch duct works, which equals about 40 CFM, which means I would need four, or excuse me, 10 ducts coming out of this thing to uh, make sure that I had enough airflow to turn the um, gas, or excuse me, turn the liquid into a gas when it goes through the, the coil. Turns out in many splits, it's not 400, it's only 250, which means that's gonna need about seven uh, to make this work. Uh, but I found out that mini splits actually work better if they're a little bit more constricted. So I'm putting six on the one tons and five on the three quarter tons, which means I had to add two to my one ton units, which works out fine, and I had to add one to my three quarter tons units, uh, which works out okay too. I had a place to put them. So if need be, I can still add a seventh one to this one ton upstairs, but I don't, don't think I'm gonna need to. Um, it is up and it is running and it is pumping out some hot air right now. So it's got a uh, pretty good amount of force to it. I mean, it's not gonna blow you away or anything, but you can definitely feel the, you know, there's a big amount of hot air going out. The uh, fan, you can really not hear it very well. I did notice when this turned on that I could feel air getting sucked in around there, so I sealed those up and then I still gotta seal up at that crack there and a couple other ones where you know air is going to get around this filter it did say on the uh, manual that this screen is optional well, i am tempted to take that out just because then i can butt my return air uh, plenum right up to there and then tape it off and that ought to seal up most of these cracks like i can feel air pulling through right there that ought to seal most of those up it's all working it's pulling right about 3,000 watts and all four units are going right now. And the sun's still out. But so here's our outside unit running. I hey, think. Working. Yep. So what does this do? Uh, it is in heat mode right now, so it's actually taking the heat in the air and pumping into the house. Making the house warmer, aren't you? I am making the house warmer. So I've got these a vent there and a vent up there. It has to come from the mini split that's over here. So in order to get around this corner, since that is basically the roof structure there, I've got to create some sort of a pocket for the vents to go through. So what we're doing is basically putting in some faux beams that will um, uh, cover up that beam pocket or cover up that uh, uh, vent that goes through there. So I'm gonna come out four feet with the uh, faux beams. And it'll be a wood all the way around kind of design. I've got it uh, planned out how I want it to look. I was hoping it'll look good when it's done. I have, it's very hard to tell what it's gonna look like now. But I'll have a four foot 
uh, faux beam coming out, a four foot faux beam coming out there, two on this side, two on this side, two right above the uh, window seams here will come out also. And there'll be wood all the way around, some trim pieces, another piece of wood all the way around that'll hold the uh, uh, ceiling lights. I'm gonna wait to put those in until we're ready because I wanna make sure they're lined up perfectly. And then this will be in the uh, center with the fan. They'll be drywalled around the fan. So if that works out, it should look pretty cool. If I screw it up, well, I screw it up. But um, right now, I've got measured off. So that X marks the spot. This is the bay I need to have my vent come down in. I got an arrow saying the vent's gonna be on this side. So when we uh, put the actual vents in here later today, I'll make sure I get that tucked over to the side as far as I can go. Uh, so right now it's got to put some blocking in to hold that faux beam because once the drywall is up, we're not going to be able to see it at all. So I'm going to put uh, three blocks in, one there, one there, one a little over four feet out so that I'll have an end piece to wrap around for my nailer. And I've got uh, several of those to put in. So I've already measured and cut my blocks. i got to hop up there and get them in.